she holds two roles at Evenset. One is the CTO, and the other is CWO, the Chief Worrying Officer. She's responsible for the whole product development lifecycle at Evenset while worrying for everything else so the team doesn't have to. Tonight, she'll be, pre be presenting about data security in healthcare. Welcome, Mashit. About a year ago, uh, Care Partners announced something that uh, put a chill in the spine of everybody in the industry. They announced that their product had been compromised and their customers' information had been inappropriately used. That's when blackmailing started. Attackers asked for a lot of money in exchange for not releasing those information to the public. And as Care Partners refused, they reached out to CBC with a lot more details about the story. According to the story, more than 80,000 customers' information was accessed by the attackers, including first name and last name, age, sex, date of birth, phone number, address, as well as medical conditions and diagnosis from diabetes to breast cancer and STDs. With so much at stake, care partners had to hire a security assessment team to come and analyze the scope of the attack and provide recommendations for what they can do to prevent future attacks. Incidents like these are happening more and more often in healthcare. Uh, studies show that healthcare stands 15th uh, among 17 major industries in terms of endpoint security, and that puts patients' information and even their lives in danger. And I know, uh, know this firsthand because for the past 10 years, I have been studying and working in this field, being part of software development teams in large organizations from BlackBerry to small and mid-sized companies in FinTech, uh, where we were trying to deliver business value while protecting the customer's uh, privacy and security. And I've seen how the way we look at security and some misconceptions around that can really define how the products are shaped. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today, followed by some actions you can take to improve your product security. The most common misconception is to take security second to your product development. Especially as entrepreneurs, we would love to uh, finish our functional requirements first and then come to security at the end. But this is almost like building a boat and trying to sink proof it after. As it's obvious that you need to design your boat to be sink proof from day one, you need to design your software to be secure from day one. Don't outsource security. Um, obviously, it's always a lot easier to pass the baton to somebody else and make them responsible for what's our responsibility. Um, at the end of the day, you are accountable for your end-to-end -end product security. I, uh, just about a month ago, I was talking to a co-founder that had already built their product, and when I asked him, so what's your approach about security? What are you doing about that? He said, oh, we are hosted on Azure, and Azure is HIPAA compliant, so I think we are fine. Um, what he was missing, and I think a lot of co uh, startup co-founders miss, is that Cloud security is only a part of your product security. And the day when you're attacked, uh, you are accountable for the problems that arise and not any of the services and products that you're using today. And regulations are not the high water mark. In fact, regulations are the bare minimum you need to do to be able to sell your product every organization you're going to deploy your product to are going to have their own internal process to audit your product. Um, two years ago, when we were deploying one of our clients' products in Rivera Nursing Homes, they asked us for documentation on how we did our architecture design to software development, code reviews, testing, and everything. And it was only after the internal processes at Rivera that we were given the green light to actually deploy the product there. So if you want to be able to scale your sales process in future, you need to be able to, you need to be proactive about security today. So with those in, in mind, let's talk about some actions you can take today to improve your product security. 
start with education and awareness for your team. Um, I have been part of teams that were very knowledgeable and very capable of implementing any security measures, but were very confused about the priority of those comparing to all the other works they had to do on a daily basis. So be very explicit about that. Um, explain what pieces of information you're gathering from your customers and why is it so important for your organization to take a good care of those. Now that your team is with you on the priorities, define checklists and processes to make it easier for them to follow the best practices. Even better, use tooling and automation to protect your processes. As your team scales and with every new hire, you don't want to depend on your developer's goodwill to follow the best practices. As Ethan said, we have integrated a lot of the testing and analysis tools with our GitLab CI CD so we can catch the issues with every new line of code that gets into the repo. And intru uh, use uh, intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems for your products. Um, similar to how credit card companies look at the uh, usage log to um, give you an alert when something doesn't look right or block suspicious activity, similar products exist for your uh, solutions on the cloud. So make sure you're using one of those at least to um, get an alert when, when things don't look healthy. Care partners um, had to learn their, learn their lesson the hard way, um, but today is your chance to define your product strategy in terms of security. Um, at the end of the day, we are not designing for security to make a regulatory officer happy or to our clients satisfied. We are designing for security to protect our product against attacks. And this change in the way we look at security is going to take us a long way, I think. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the discussion. I, I, I have two thoughts in my head uh, about security and what you just said. Um, the first is um, I'm an IT person who um, develops, deploys, worries about. Um, humans are the soft link in the security team, um, as from my experience. Like all the tooling, all the back end processing, CI, CD, notwithstanding, at the end of the day, humans fishing still gets you fish. Um, I, I hope you'd agree with that. And then this, the second thought is, and, and this is disturbing, even as we sit here, south of us, Quest Diagnostics has just lost control of 19 million. Uh, think of Quest Diagnostic as a uh, an expanded version of Life Labs, you know, people who do all your clinical laboratory diagnostics. 19 million records um, have just gone out the window. Um, the point about that is, um, and you may agree with this, like too often, notwithstanding this discussion and the general knowledge, uh, people are not pouring water on their houses when their neighbors is burning. So everybody is kind of being like, oh, uh, it happened. Well. It is happening. Yeah. What are you doing to prevent it? Uh, uh, your thoughts on both? That's right. Um, so on your first point, I think uh, in a lot of cases, um, I look at it as like everybody needs to play their own role. In the case of care partners, for example, um, some basic uh, security measures like encrypting the database was not there. Um, so, and in a lot of cases, if you design for security, uh, when a user makes a mistake and their account is compromised, the rest of the accounts are not compromised. Um, so it's important that everybody plays their role in this whole chain. And uh, you're exactly right. I actually had a slide here to talk about that, but it was just, I wasn't sure if it, if it could uh, fit it in seven minutes. But it's very important to have a clear strategy for before an attack happens and when it's happening and after it's happening. Be a clear strategy of what's the first thing and second thing and third thing that everybody's going to do when we know it's happening. And um, I, I, I can't agree more on that. Thank you so much.